It's almost time. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Fire Emblem Three Houses. And now we are um, taking the fight to the Alliance themselves as we go to take on Claude. I always wondered. I always wonder if what Bylas with Bylas is wondering. Like, so, Byl so Edelgard, I know we're taking on Claude, right? I know it's an important position, but shouldn't we focus all our attention on you know Fargus and the Kingdom since they're our biggest threats? And it's like we should, but then again, Claude is a filthy, cheating, lying bitch. <laughs> Edelgard does this out of spite. <laughs> so I would take on Dimitri, but honestly, Claude's a bigger prick. <laughs> Fucking stab me in the back. So yeah, and again, something that's admirable about Edelgard, and I assume the other leaders, is um that they don't act like, oh, uh, oh, Claude's nothing, or oh, um, he's nothing. It's like, no, 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 Claude is fucking dangerous, you know. We, we've got to be careful and we can't take any risks, because obviously Edelgard doesn't underestimate her enemies. I assume that's what, I assume Claude will act the same. I don't think he'll be just like, oh, Edelgard, oh, Dimitri, whatever. It's like, no, 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 we've got shit to deal with. And I do appreciate that, because, you know, usually the biggest, um, um, the biggest roast to perdition is when you underestimate your enemies. It's like, oh, it's like, Baku, it's like, oh, oh, it's a farm boy, gets beaten twice, and then soon loses his mind and loses his wife, and still can't beat him. <laughs> he gave up his wife, and he still can't beat all. God, Baku, you just had it so fucking bad. You know, Baku was in the first battle with um, um, the end of part one, because I know he was in that place. If he was in that first battle, Arm would not have lasted long, methinks, given his stats at the time. But you never, you, you never know, you never know. With Echoes, there's a way to work around stats, and it's called Critical Hits, Weapons, and Combat Arts. <laughs> Fucking killer bows, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, we're just, um, the whole thing is that we're taking on Claude. We're not going to take on Claude right away. We've got, like, one or two supports to get through, but they are good supports, mind you. But, yeah, so we're going to take on Claude and the Alliance, and oh my, this is quite the chapter. Um, I mean, actually, again, something else I quite like is, actually, well, Final Games always do this, where they show what's going on elsewhere, but considering, you know, we're focused on the Black Eagles, it's still nice to see where the other leaders are at this point in time, and how they're different in each pathway, because, again, in... So the teach is still alive. Black Eagles pathway, you don't really see the madness take hold of Dimitri, because again, he's still got Rhea, Rhea there, he's kind of... Obviously, he's still angry and a bit, and like, when you go to fight him, he's kind of nuts. But, um... You know, he's still a bit... He, you know, he, he's not as stir-crazy, whereas in the, in the Blue Lion, you literally see him lose... Just fucking lose his mind. Yeah. All right, you know it's pro it might be because a he has a rare, but also he's probably just as angry at Byleth as well for doing this instead of just focusing, fo venting all of his aggression towards Edelgard. I'm not sure. Yeah. But still, yeah. So Claude's got like you know again this map goes to show Claude has a plan and it is a good plan. We succeed in the end, but it is a good plan because Christ, this map was oh, one hell of an endurance round. Yeah. See what you're made of, teach. So yeah, yeah, Claude is the strategist, and he make and he does come with a very good plan. Okay, so yeah, this. This is Edelgard and Ferdinand support, and this I support I think is one of the strongest A supports of the game. Because it shows how far their relationship has come and why Ferdinand is important to Edelgard because of what he does. Um, and stuff like that. It's like, you know, it's a good reflection on Ferdinand's part. It's like, okay, look, you know, I did reevaluate myself. And it was difficult, but I got over it, and, and Edelgard's like, alright, wonderful, thank you very much. But at the same time, he still questions what she does, and he actually, instead of just questioning it, he brings up some really good, legitimate points about, like, her ideals, how, like, how she um, expects to reform society, and so on. Because, it, like he said, you know, the stuff that's been established is there for a reason, it's just they've gone a wrong way about it. But we can still take what, what's been established and rework it to make it better, because you know, you know, um, instead of just completely doing away with it, because you know, there's good and bad to everything, and even though I don't agree with the church system, there is good that comes from it. You know, the, you know, the church still has, you know, an upstanding reputation for reasons. Yeah, it has a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people are against it, and you know, if the, if the church was wasn't so corrupt, it wouldn't have got to this in the first place. But there's still a lot of good that comes from it, and that's what Ferdinand's focusing on, focusing on what the good, what good came from it, and how that can be applied to Edelgard's new regime. Because Edelgard kind of wants to do a 180, and Ferdinand's like, let's do a bit of a 90, shall we? Yeah. 
ability. Yeah. Things are more common. But again, it's also just shows um it, but it also again it highlights something I really like about free houses yeah, where um I got yeah, um I really feel cuz we don't really see this with farming games except for really Radiant Dawn where we actually see the main characters in their roles as like, you know, as a position high position as a leader or position of government cuz usually we just see them rallying an army, defeat the bad guy, end the game. But here we really get to um uh, really get to see like Edelgard in her like as an emperor and again I've liked that the game kind of stressed this because they're so young they are a bit inexperienced Edelgard doesn't make the best decisions she doesn't you know, she, you know some of our ideas have faults in them and she hasn't really thought this through completely but that's why people like Ferdinand exist to challenge her ideals to offer advice and to help you know, strengthen her I, her ideals and her, you know, thing. And, you know, Elrogard actually does take note of this. You know, instead of just saying, oh, whatever, it's like, oh, no, I don't need to listen. It's like, no, this is a legit thing. And I think it's really strong about them because it shows that Ferdinand is important. He just needs to know when to hold back and when to follow through. Because, again, Ferdinand isn't scared to confront Elrogard about, yeah. Finally, but yeah, and Elrogard does appreciate his advice. She doesn't just think, again, just because she beat him and he's annoying, she doesn't think less of him. So, again, I, that's what I feel makes this support in particular so damn strong. It's just really, really nice to see the two come together and discuss things. And again, I like that, you know, the three lords aren't perfect. They have their problems. Obviously, Edelgard's a bit too forefront with her ideal. She's a little bit forceful. And obviously, you know, she's a bit drastic. Dimitri is, a you know, though he... You know, does seem like you know he at first he seems like a oh upstanding citizen. You know he has some real issues to go through, and he goes off the deep end the most. And Claude, though he is a very you know though he does look out for people and he is very clever, he's also a bit of a backstabber and a, and you know he's the type where he wouldn't you know whereas Edelgard and Dimitri would be more um you know they have. I'm not going to say moral compass, they're more like, you know, they're a bit more honourable and they'll, in just like their actions and so on, or so to speak, you know? Claude would have no problem, like, doing some underhanded tactics to get his thing. I know Hubert does that, but Eldegard herself doesn't do it. But it's the type of thing where Claude wouldn't bat an eye at doing something like that. Because, again, they all have they all have their pros and they all have their cons. And I like the free houses, thanks to the time skip, really goes into that. Because not only do they change, but you also see, because they're in the position of being, their personality traits and their how they think and act really comes to the forefront. Whereas before, it was more of a, it's there, but it wasn't really the front and center. But anyway, enough of them. Let's talk about these two who, you know, contrast so drastically. Obviously, it's just, you know, Ingrid wanting to help Bernadette out. But the problem is Ingrid is a little too forceful about it. She's not very sensitive. Granted, you know, at the same time with Bernie, you know, and just stuff like that, sometimes you have to be... You know, usually actions do make for better results, but at the same time, again, like I saw with the Lysifia Marianne support, if you try and be a bit too forceful and too much pressure, you just cause a panic attack, and that's never going to help. But, you know, at the same time, it does work in the end, but Ingrid just has to realise, don't just, like, drag people out of their room. It really doesn't work like that. Yeah, try not to get physical. It really doesn't work for the most part. <sighs> But something I've been thinking of recently, especially because I've just seen it all over Twitter and just with the Game Awards, it's like, how much is Fire Emblem Free Houses going to impact the future of this series? Because obviously, you know, when a big, when a game in the franchise comes along and it kind of sets a new standard, obviously a lot of games follow on from that. When Super Metroid came out, every other Metroid game, well, Fusion and Zero Mission were very much close to that. And, you know, even to this day, it's kind of the basis. When Prime came out, you had the Prime Trilogy follow over. Ocarina of Time is still the front and center for Zelda games and Link to the Past is front and center for 2D Zelda games. Mario 64 is still the basis for Mario games. You know, they, they take, they make such big impacts on their series. Like to this day, they're still using them. I mean, Fire Emblem is kind of the same because, you know, the first one came out and that kind of reinvented, you know, that was just by, oh yeah. So we, well, first we had um, Grappler. Now we just go straight to Warmaster because Caspar just had to focus on two things and two things only. But, I mean, I should have probably got Tone Breaker by unlocking the thing, but at the same time, I was just like, eh, fuck it, just go straight to War Master. You know, I finally got a damn Masterclass. Hooray. Oh, yeah. And I got Res Plus 3, so that's nice. Did anyone else promote, or... I wonder. No, no, we just get straight to the mission. North and the, the again, the, the briefings are very, 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 very short. But as I was saying with Fire Emblem, so obviously you had the first game, and over time they've kind of reestablished themselves. And with like every six and seven, I'm going to say more so seven just because of its success financially and commercially. Not, I'm not looking at quality and stuff like that, because every seven's kind of like, again, it didn't 
change much from FE6. I'm just talking about in terms of how much it put it on the map and how much it established. You know, that was kind of the new precedent. And then Awakening came along and that was the new precedent. And now Free Houses is here and this is the new precedent. But Free Houses changed so much and added so much. How's Fire Emblem going to continue from this point forward? Because I'm, I'm all for them, you know, trying to expand upon what Free Houses did. But at the same time, you've got to build a world around it. You can't just have these elements in any random Fire Emblem game. Like I've said so many times, if you make an FE7, FE6 remake, the monastery is pointless. The only other time I could cut, like, again, yeah. I could see, like, say, with Path of Radiance remake, you kind of do a monastery thing where you go around a mercenary base or you just run around Benion, that type thing. But obviously, you know, you've got to really design the game around it. And Free House is highly designed around, like, the elements it introduces works for it specifically. Like, you know, it does, yeah, if you tried it in other Final games, it wouldn't be as thing. Like, class promotion, because you learn things, you know, that's how you promote. Whereas other Final games, it doesn't really work like that. Once your class is assigned, unless you get seals, you can't really change, like, which weapons or which attributes you want to focus on. But obviously, they could learn from this, and maybe, you know, you can decide in downtime, do you want to, like, like, again, if they were doing Path of Radiance Remake, in, in the downtime, do you want to study this instead? Do you want to focus on this? Do you want, if you support with someone, will this improve um, your ranks within a certain thing? All that jazz, you know, so that, I feel, would be very interesting. But it's going to be interesting to see where Fire Emblem goes from here, considering how big of a success Free House has been. Because I don't think Nintendo expected this. I don't think Intelligent Systems expected this. Like, good sales, I was thinking fair enough, because Fire Emblem is popular still, and, you know, e um, not Echoes. Um, even Warriors did well, Awakening and Fates, they've all done incredibly well. But this game, not only did it do extremely well in a short amount of time, but again, the D it's the D the game, uh, it's, uh, and it's, we've got a new Smash rep, and two Game of the Year awards. That's really going to make one hell of a difference. So, it's going to be interesting to see where does Fire Emblem go from here, and will we be able to peak three houses? I certainly hope so, even though a Fire Emblem game doesn't have to be, like, better than free house if it's as good or even slightly worse that's still a very high bar so as long as it's, it's a really good game i'm all for it but it's going to be interesting to see where the series goes from the, from now on because you know this uh, once once this, something this successful kicks in you know there's no going back i mean if it's a remake then yeah like echoes decided to go back a bit but again it made sense because it's a it's a you know it's a remake of uh gaiden and again you have to because of how gaiden was and how different that was you have to cater specifically to its mechanics and so on you have to design it around it you can't just take all the stuff like again pair, pair, like again not having pair up because again it wouldn't really work for Gaiden or in this case Echoes but um as I was saying but anyway so this chapter yeah it's a repeat of Aloise's and Shimmy's Paralog but to their defense uh, to their credit that was like the best Paralog in um well, well, yeah, one of the best paralogs in Free House. This is one of the ma best maps in Free Houses. So, I, for one, am very, very... I'm, for one, more than happy to go back to this bit. But, um, so this map, oh boy, it is quite the endurance round because the enemy variety is big, the enemies are strong, they respawn, and they come from many, many, many directions. Now, there are multiple ways to tackle this chapter. One of the main things is take out the, like, the, the leader over there so you can just stop the Wyverns. I didn't do that. I decided to take my time, and I kind of regret it. But, um, so, and obviously, like, um, get all the points. Like, you can either really rush this chapter or really take your time. But I would suggest either doing one of two things. Either being highly, highly, highly aggressive to the point where you just, like, bum rush it. Or be a lot more defensive. That's what I did. I decided to be a lot more defensive, and for me, it worked because you really, because because again, because there's so many enemies and because they're so strong, you really either want to kill them before they kill you, or you want to really turtle down, make a nice blockade, and then progress slowly and safely. I prefer to do that because of all the wyverns. But um, ow. So I mean, I mean again, the, I don't feel any of the enemies are OP except for maybe Hilda, but uh, I could deal with her. Um, again, it's not like the Wyverns are like, you know, they will absolutely, like, destroy you if they go up to. They'll just, they'll, they'll definitely hurt. It's just that there's a lot of them, and again, they've got the flying range and all that jazz. But, again, I also, well, it, oh yeah, so, like, Scythia versus Edelgard. And again, I like the conversation they have, and again, one thing I really like is, with Edelgard specifically, you can actually recruit Lysithia. It doesn't have to be, you know, Byleth. And I think that's really, really cool that some leaders have that impact on other students. It's not just down to you. Down! Poor Lysithia. Oh god, she was a Gremory? Jesus! This early on. So yeah, I have the choice. Do I kill Lysithia, or do I spare her? And of course, 
I spare her because I never got to use Lysithia and, and you know, this playthrough is where I discovered, holy shit, Lysithia is fucking amazing in terms of just pure damage output. The HP could use some work, I'll tell you that much. So, yeah, and I think it's cool that the leaders can do that. It shows that, you know, how much they matter to the story and the other characters, because again, I don't know who can recruit who. But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, say, Dimitri could maybe recruit... Like, again, I don't know what happens, so please don't spoil, like, oh no, this character's locked, or this character's locked. But I wouldn't be surprised if, say, Dimitri could recruit, say, Ferdinand or Lorenz because of them as nobles. I wouldn't be surprised if Claude could recruit Petra or maybe Dorothea because of where they come from and stuff like that. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, certain characters could recruit other people. Obviously, you know, Byleth is the most important, and obviously it makes sense, like, again, Hilda's not moving, Dudu's not moving, and, and Hubert's not moving, so that makes sense. But just in general, I just like how, you know, it's not all down to Byleth. You can use the Lords to recruit other people. And I think that's really, really damn cool. But as I was saying about this chapter, so for me, I played more defensively because of the Wyverns, and thankfully I had Edelgard to help out. But at the same time, you know, Edelgard was mainly tanking the main force um, with the help of Byleth, but I had my other force flank round and take out all the other positions. So I kind of played a bit of both, mostly defensive, but also a bit of both, and god damn that speed stat. And it just keeps rising. Uh, I feel sorry for her red stat, but then again, usually I can kill majors before they even get a chance. So, yeah. Ow. God, that 49. These get HP back. Well, it's not, oh, it's not even enough to kill. But yeah, so again, the enemies hurt here. They're quite tanky. There aren't, I will say, there are not a lot of magic units, so use that to your advantage. Again, that's why physical tanks are actually pretty good, because you don't have to worry about mages, for the most part. Um, so again, um, like again, I imagine if to do, if, again, I don't know if they do, but if the Blue Lions did this map, like, to do could just be like, yeah, I can do this all day. And thankfully, Edelgard could. Ooh, yeah, archers really help, because again, withers. Archers and magic units help, but good physical tanks help too. And obviously, you know, it helps to have people who are fast, but generally I'd say bulkier units or those with extremely high DPS are best for this map. Um, but that's just me. I really did enjoy it. It was definitely taxing. It was very, very taxing because, again, the, the Wyverns are nothing to scoff at. They're dangerous, man. They are extremely dangerous and they respawn. But again, one thing you can do is just, like, if you want, just go all the way around. Instead of going through the center, just make your way to the right. It could be, you know, you could easily just cut off the Wyverns and focus them. And there goes Bernie. I don't know who's going to do... No, I think we're out of the range of them. Again, thanks to her personal skills, she's got enough um, to kill with a brave bow. What? Ah, oh, how lovely. So, yeah. And again, I do like how, because of the way the enemies are set out and the map design, different classes can really do well here. Like, again, Wyverns can do extremely well here because they can cross terrain, but there's a lot of archers to watch out for. Paladins are good because they, you know, again, they can move... Um, very fast, you just gotta watch out because the units are bulky as shit and they hurt. Mages couldn't do really effective because a lot of the units don't have good res, but again, if they get to you, they, they'll, 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 they'll get you, they'll get you. <laughs> Chuck you or fuck you. And yeah, oh, here's Hilda. Thing is, this before I knew what Hilda was like, so I didn't feel too bad about taking her down, but now it hurts because I like Hilda a lot. Oh, and here goes the critical. Boom. Yeah, and I wanted to weaken her so Edelgard could get the hit in. Because I wanted to see, yeah, that's what I do. I like to go with Byleth first and see, can I recruit them if possible? Or if not, maybe Edel I know Edelgard wouldn't, but I guess Byleth can't either, so I was like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, Edelgard would have lost if she didn't um, have Byleth support. Actually, I could have killed her if I used a combat art with the with Edelgard's personal weapon, but I decided not to. I was like, eh, fuck it, you ain't worth that thing. Silver Axe. And there she goes. I bet the other god did that spike. There's only one axe. <laughs> There's only one axe woman in this game. And it's me. <laughs> I counted on you retreating. <sighs> Damn it, Hilda. Why didn't you run away? I know you're like one of the best units on this thing, but why didn't you run away? And sure you can. Nice one, Caspar. Again, I love the, I love the outfit too, just the cape and everything. It looks really damn cool. Yeah, and there goes Petra. So again, many classes can thrive here for different reasons. Keep an eye on your backside though, depending on how you go. If you want to split, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, personally, I would not recommend splitting up your forces just because the enemy team on both sides are very strong and you need all the units, I feel, you need all the units you can get. I'm sure there are ways around that you could easily split them up, but I'm just saying, personally, I would try and keep everyone to stick together, or at least close enough together. Oh, she, and now she got special dance. She literally just... Uh, <laughs> she, um, so what's her special dance? She does the Macarena. <laughs> I'm sorry, that'd be funny. Dorothy is like... Da, 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 hey, Macarena, boost! <laughs> It's like, hey, she can shake those hips. Her hips don't lie. Yeah, here they come. And Hubert's going to deal with this guy. 
and you know take them a long way. But yeah, so this map is quite the meaty thing, but also it's very fulfilling. It, you know, it's kind of got that Radiant Dawn thing where it's a big challenge or it's a big uh, endurance. But I, you know, I, you know, I, I can deal. Got him. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking double. I'm taking 30 damage. But thankfully, the other guy's got a lot of HP and she hits back hard. But yeah, so this is quite exhilarating for the right and wrong reasons, but mostly right reasons. I say this is one of the stronger maps in the Black Eagles, which is kind of both a good and a bad thing, considering A, it's a repeat map, but at the same time, it's a really good repeat map. So anyway, next time we come back, we're going to take the fight to Claude himself, see how he's doing. We're going to kill so many fucking wyverns, I'm surprised there's a population left, and we're going to see what fate has in store. Will Edelgard Petty get the best of her, or will she be merciful? Until then, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care, and have a wonderful day.